I live in the Bronx. I work at Bronx Community, so the people that I associate the most with are people who are black and Latin. So they see it, they know what the story is. They, you know, they often ask me, you know, so what happened after Occupy or something, you know, because I talk about politics in my classroom. And, you know, so there's a certain amount of cynicism that people have. And then, unfortunately, that leads to just explosions as opposed to a real systematic organization that will ultimately know how to get rid of the problem in the first place, which, you know, in my opinion is capitalism. I mean, here we have a black president who he, he can barely get the word racism out of his mouth. He, you know, he, um, when it came to Ferguson, it, it, people had to riot and they had to go out every single day in freezing cold weather to get him to get Eric Calder to come to, you know, Ferguson to do something about it. And, and yeah, there's, now they've figured out their systemic racism. And Darren Wilson, who was the cop, mm -hmm. gets off. What does that say to people? Except for the fact that the people, you know, Obama got a lot of money from Wall Street. He gets a lot of money from the oil companies. He's not going to, you know, he knows which side his bread is buttered on. And you can't. All of these people, I mean, they talk about it themselves, how they have to spend all their time campaigning for money. So if that's the case, they have to answer to the same people. They have to answer to the wealthy. And if they're going to answer to the wealthy, then they're going to have to do the bidding. And they're all, you know, prostitutes, in my opinion. So you can't really, the only way that you can make those kind of incremental changes is if you fight. If you really have, like, even during the Civil War, you had to have 600 to 750,000 people be killed in order to even have that small window of, you know, fairness for blacks in the South, where, you know, you had an, a Reconstruction period where people managed to, the first thing they did was look for their families because the kids were sold away, you know, to other plantations. So people were roaming around the South looking around for their families and they established schools and became lawyers and doctors and all kinds of things. But that couldn't remain because American capitalism cannot allow that. So that, you know, the very nature of capitalism itself calls for the pitting of people against each other and the ma maintenance of racism. So that white workers, as you said before when you asked about how can people seem to vote against their own interests, I mean, a lot of people aren't voting, but also, you know, the there's a conflation of social things with economic things and you know most people are are raised in the Bible Belt who vote for these people if they do vote and um, their their education is one that's not based on a liberal education so that they end up you know conflating social issues a lot of times with economic issues but they you know when they're interviewed they want you know, if you ask them the right question, they want health care. They want, you know, a, a good minimum wage. They want a, a decent place to live. They want all those things. But the sort of way that they're asked brings people into believing that they are just, you know, these hicks who don't know any better and they want racism and all. But, but if you ask the other questions, do you want health care? Do you want a decent job? They all want that. They all want the same thing.